Up until 2005, methyl bromide was the go-to fumigant for fruit and vegetable producers around the country. However, since the EPA has decided to phase out the product, farmers have been looking for alternatives. Damon Jones headed out to the University of Georgia Tifton campus recently where research is ongoing. Less than a decade ago, there was really only one option when it came to protecting your fruit and vegetable garden, as methyl bromide was both effective and affordable. However, with that product now being phased out and selling for thousands of dollars per acre, a different option must be found. However, it's a proposition that's easier said than done. Methyl bromide is simply an amazing, amazing tool for a uh, vegetable grower on plastic culture to control weeds, diseases, and nematodes. And it is very, very challenging to replace. And in fact, I don't feel like we've replaced it completely, but we have developed some alternatives. After years of research and testing, plenty of headway has been made to finding a substitute. However, one specific problem keeps cropping up. Uh, we had fairly good alternatives for nematodes. We had fairly good alternatives for diseases, but in fact, we did not have very good alternatives for weeds, uh, especially nutsedge species, which is the most problematic weed in plastic culture. And if one weed species wasn't enough to deal with, researchers also found more invasive plants that producers really never had to worry about when using methyl bromide. It's just another problem that must be overcome. So as we develop alternatives that are effective on nutsedge, in fact, we have found weaknesses of some of those alternatives where they don't control grasses or small seeded broadleaf weeds such as pigweed. Everybody knows what a pigweed is. We developed alternatives that'll kill a nutsedge, but now we, we can't control the pigweed. However, it's a challenge the University of Georgia is taking head on with the help from fruit and vegetable producers who are some of the most innovative farmers in the industry. And that innovation is never more evident than in the evolution of the mulch. And some of the mulches that are being developed, and mulch, we're talking about the plastic that we, we cover our beds with, uh, some, of these, the, some of the plastics are so effective now at keeping fumigates in the bed. Our Oldham traditionally used mulches. They're very pretty, they heat the soil very well, but they weren't very good at keeping the fumigate in the bed. But these new mulches, basically we can mitigate uh, off-target movement of the fumigate so effectively. It's an amazing uh, occurrence that, that we're having that's increasing the activity of the fumigate. While producers are hesitant to use herbicides in their garden, with the proper use, it can be very effective when combined with other fumigates. Today we have a fumigate alternative to replace methyl bromide, but it has weaknesses. Uh, so we have to use specific mulches that are better at keeping the fumigate in the soil because we can, we can increase the concentration of the fumigate in the soil by hold, holding it in there with the mulch. And then we also have to implement herbicides to pick up those weed species that we're not effectively controlling with the fumigate system. As for how much longer producers will have to wait for a final product, it might be sooner rather than later. But I, I really hope in two to four years, we've got alternatives being used by every grower that's happy. That's the key. We've got the alternatives. Many of our growers are happy, but there's some of our growers that are not getting effective control, and we need to work with them specifically to figure out uh, how to improve an alternative to work for those guys. But I'm hoping within two to four years, I don't have to do another, uh, any more research and finding alternatives to methyl bromide. Reporting from Tifton, I'm Damon Jones for the Georgia Farm Monitor.